Good morning. I just wanted to share what it's like being a warrior and following God closely. You know, he he dropped compassion in my heart in September when I moved here and I was living actually it was probably the beginning of October. And he moves me around pretty swiftly to take territory everywhere we put our foot, everywhere we live that's more territory for the kingdom so this whole concept that we have to be stable and stay in one address or we can't buy a car it's not the kingdom so this is going to be my see i first moved in with a friend then i moved into a group home then i moved back with that friend and now i'm with another friend i've moved four times in one month so when god's getting ready to prepare you for your calling what if you're a touring musician? Moving isn't bad then, right? So you gotta get used to get up and getting up and going. When he tells me in the morning, you're leaving today, I'm like, yes, sir. So yesterday I was at a nice little restaurant downtown having tacos and my table number was 35 and I knew that was Isaiah, so I wanna read it to you. The desert and the parched land will be glad. This is the joy of the redeemed. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. And it goes on. That's only up to verse 4. So there's a lot, lot to unpack there. Now, we're not talking about vengeance against our abusers. No, we need to forgive our abusers. God loves them too, and they deserve to have fun too. We're talking about people that he puts in our lives for a season, a reason, or a lifetime that are struggling, that have strongholds. They're our friends. But there comes a point where your spirit and the anointing of Elijah that's here now bucks up against Jezebel's spirit. And it's a controlling spirit. It'll kick you out every day. And then when you are getting ready to leave, it'll try to keep you there. I don't understand that, but maybe that's the human part of them. They're, they know deep down inside that you have their freedom. They're just not ready to take a hold of it yet, and that's okay. I've barely got free from Jezebel last year, and I've been walking with God 31 years. So no condemnation, no judgment. But when God says, this is now becoming more powerful than your spirit alone can handle with prayer and whatever you're doing, it's wearing me down. It's starting to take control. It's starting to gain ground. It's time to move. That's it. When, when somebody has a home, and I'm living in their home, and they are not ready, they're, you know, like I said, it took me 31 years, so lots of grace, lots of time. You know, start with just getting clean. Start with just being saved, you know. No condemnation here, none. Total understanding, totally. That is a sticky, bugaboo, identity-binding demon. And she is get, having her last gasp right now in America. And so it doesn't make sense for a warrior to have to move to get away because of the spiritual difference. If that doesn't make sense. But God cares about Trace she, he wants me to go where my spirit's useful. Because if you keep trying to monitor and manage and, and maintain around a Jezebel spirit that they are not repentant, God's not probably convicting them of it yet, you know, you got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to gamble and you got to know when to say, I fold at this table. I'm going over here to this table to play another game that I know I can win at because I like to win. 
When God tells me you're not going to win right now in this season with this person in this space, because I love the space, man. It's been nice. It's been gracious living in a gated community. But my spiritual freedom is now in in um, compromise. So I'm like, God sends us to certain places to start fires in other warriors and to tell them you're a warrior. You can do it. I believe in you. I'm leaving so you can depend on God and stop depending on strong women in your life. That's love. Now, where I'm going today is an interview at a large sober living transitional complex it's actually behind Guitar Center which is nice it's called Third Tradition and if they don't have room for me yet I gotta go into the shelters and I'm looking forward to it because staying in a home and being lazy is not my best moment and I get really lazy when I'm in a home because I'm it's not that I'm lazy, it's that I'm drained. I'm fighting Jezebel, and she takes a lot of my energy. So when I move out, and I'm in a structured environment, there's actually more safety there and freedom spiritually. Even if the people that run it have that spirit in them, it's not as profound, pronounced, than in a private home. Because that's their domain. So I'm taking land. I... You know, God gives me pencils all the time. I walked over and got my, had my cape on and sang, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is the Lord God of Brian Welch? And I got this new jacket from the church, and I feel like it's from him. It's beautiful. It's DKNY. Check this out. People don't know how awesome DKNY is because it's New York, baby. I'm a Dodgers fan if I ever do watch TV or baseball, but but I know I went to the Yankee Stadium when I worked there. And then DK, where is it? DK and Y. There it is. It's beautiful. And I got a new T-shirt last night from my man's band. So, anyways, uh, you gotta know when to fold them, warrior. You can't. You can't just. Uh, I know people that are miserable and they're staying with people that leave poop on, they spread poop on the toilet seats because they're mental and they're doing it on purpose. I was like, why are you staying there? It's abusive. God cares about you too. And if you're a warrior, this is wisdom right now to recognize God cares about your spirit. You're the child of God bringing light. Now, does he? did he tell you to go there for a month? Yes. Did he tell you to live there three years? Fuck no. No. We're not. We're warriors. We're not sufferers. Okay? I know that there's some suffering, but you got to be willing to move, man. You got to be flexible. You know, if Abraham didn't wasn't flexible, he would have killed Isaac. That's religious spirit that's in the church. And this whole thing, I'm gonna, don't get me started. I'm not going to go there. But I do know that God is talking to me right now. Where friends become family. He's like, Trace, you're going to have to be his friend first. Seriously, just be his friend. Quit this whole romantic thing because it's scaring the shit out of him. I'm like, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm just really into him. I know, honey. But it's scary. Can we just start as friends with no, not all that heavy stuff? Because it, it feels a little heavy right now. Yes, sir. So I'm just going to go to AA, probably get a job, live in sober living, and be really busy. So by the time it actually happens, I'll be like, oh, cool. Another thing in my life, because right now I'm not that busy. Don't cover up my rose hair. Yeah, I just wanted to share. Psalm 18 says, He pulled me out of deep waters from my enemy that was too powerful for me. Oh, we're supposed to love our enemies. Yeah, but they're still your enemies. 
I can love a gorilla. I can love Osama bin Laden. That doesn't mean I let them into my private space and share space with them. No. We need wisdom, guys. We need to recognize who our enemy is. It's Satan. Recognize when he's got a stronghold on one of our friends. When God sends us to him, that's fine. But, I mean, I'm tired. My spirit is like headachy right now just talking about this stuff because I gotta leave I gotta push through this spirit now and leave because it's draining me and it's like it's it's kind of addictive it's like it, it takes away Jezebel is so and narcissism is so draining and it's like you want to control it you, you're addicted to being around them to try to control it it's a hook I think a lot of people with empathic warrior gifts get hooked in and they're like well I gotta stay home because I gotta I gotta man my post no you don't I went to the movies yesterday and saw that new Paradise movie with Julia Roberts and George Clooney it was the best money I've spent in a long time because I was loving myself God loves me he said I want you to go out on a date with me right now you need a date girl you have not been dated <laughs> That's true. So, yeah, he took me out on a date. He said, buy the tub, buy the large diet, half regular Coke. And I did. And I had fun. And I enjoyed myself. And I felt so loved afterwards. I felt the lavish love of God around me. I just felt loved. Because I obeyed the Lord. He refreshed me to get me ready to see angels are warriors right they go out and do our bidding they war they rest then they play so yesterday God knew I needed to play so I did it was good okay so if you're a warrior if you're learning how to be a warrior remember the rhythm fight rest play and fellowship and accountability is huge Fight, rest, play, accountability. Fight, rest, play, accountability. And when God tells you to move somewhere and says, Hey, you did what I wanted you to do. Bees do not live on flowers. They live in a hive. Ooh, this is a word right now. I'm getting the revelation. Some of us he can send out because he knows we're flexible and we have nothing to lose and would rather do his will and go live in different places than have a regular life because that's boring it's really boring once you get on God's track anything else is boring and he's like go to this flower and pollinate it bring your glory there okay and take some of the take some of their goodies because they're very gracious they're very feminine and uh, they're good with money you know they don't they're not real materialistic but they come from money and I, I get to take those gifts with me now. They were practical. They were in more in the physical, but I needed them. I needed to pick up some of those. Oh, yeah, and she taught me how to text people every night. At the end of the night, instead of watching a movie or obsessing about my guy or watching, you know, another teaching video, text people. Actually text them and see how they're doing. She taught me that. She taught me to be more relational. So there's a lot of good things that you can get from people that are still under the spirit that's coming against your spirit. Because why? God lets the wheat grow up with the tear. So I forgot what I was saying, so I guess it's time to end it. But I just wanted to say I love everybody. And I, I will conform to how God wants to operate in my life with my romantic life. If he wants me to be buddies for six months, I can do that. Six months. I can do that. I was joking around saying six weeks, but I said, Lord, can you just calm down my flesh? I'm just a little excitable, and it's an old area of addiction, and I don't know how to be healthy. He's like, sure. I'll help you out, Trace. I got all the help you need, all the power you need right here, babe to show because it's not showing so I said okay then calm me down so I can be calm and do your will and not be anxious and not do your will 
So he did. He calmed me down. It was cool. So now I can be friends and be chill and be peaceful and content. I feel really content right now. Probably because I'm moving. And the reason why I was so anxious was because I was in a place where I was pollinating a flower. But there were some wasps around watching me. And I was like, I need to get out of here. So now he's going to place me in a safe place. A happy place. And I'll be content. So when things happen, it won't be a rescue. It'll be a relationship. It's not a rescue, it's a relationship. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so God bless you. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. I don't know why they call it that. I guess because you're over the hump of the week of working. I will see a camel hump. But yeah, as a warrior, prayer warrior, as a missionary, and missionaries in other countries, no one to fold them. No one to come home and, and take care of your soul. God cares about you too. He cares about the people you're sent to, but he also cares about you. Be open when he says it's done. It's done. You're done. Because some of us are bees and we pollinate. Oh yeah. And we hang out in the hive, which is the church. When you're in the church, you're not you don't feel trapped to stay there because I felt trapped at um, Narjiji's Hotel. I felt a vortex sucking me back. I would try to leave and go to meetings. I couldn't even go to meetings, you guys. I couldn't go to church. I was in under the control of the enemy in a vortex. That's scary. God got me out of there. And he gave me a lot of adrenaline to do it. Now I'm like dragging my feet, packing and cleaning and dissecting everything I own. And it's a lot. A lot of girly things, a lot of pink. Got my Santa Barbara poster rolled up. So yeah, I'm kind of dragging my feet, but I'll get it done. Okay, God bless. Have a good day and be a warrior and be flexible.